Nicholas Kristof is the unofficial dean of the New York Times opinion page. I've been reading him for many years and find him one of the good liberals. He understands points of view other than his own. He seeks to do good on behalf of others. His columns are often well worth reading. Recently he raised the question, what have the liberals done to the West Coast? He tries to understand why American cities on the Pacific Ocean are such a train wreck. He says voters have the right to ask, why put liberals in charge nationally when places where they have greatest control are plagued by homelessness, crime, and dysfunction? He admits that, quote, we accept a yawning gulf between our values and our outcomes, end quote. He begins by defending the progressive left. He argues that blue states have a longer life expectancy, are much, much richer than conservative states. The education levels in blue states are much higher. He then tries to isolate the problem to liberals on the Pacific Ocean, not liberals everywhere else. The homicide rate in New York City is half that of the West Coast cities. Drug overdoses are much lower in Eastern liberal cities. Homelessness is a much bigger problem on the West Coast. Now, Christoph might consider weather to be a factor in that. The street, three states with the lowest rates of homelessness are Vermont, Maine, and New York. A homeless person would probably prefer to spend January in San Diego than in Vermont. His conclusion, quote, so my take is that the West Coast Central problem is not so much that it's unserious as that it's infected with an ideological purity that is focused more on intentions than on oversight and outcomes, end quote. In other words, West Coast liberals are too idealistic. Christoph admits that the West Coast has no Republican Party to hold the liberals accountable, and this is also a problem. How do we critique Christoph? Ah, where to begin? James Freeman in the Wall Street Journal observes that it isn't just West Coast cities that suffer from social meltdown. Crime, housing costs, and government dysfunction affect progressive-run cities across America. Think Chicago has a crime problem? How about Detroit, Baltimore, St. Louis? They are a long way from the Pacific Ocean, but just like West Coast cities, they suffer from crime and dysfunction. Another argument that it isn't just the West Coast. People are fleeing progressive enclaves by the hundreds of thousands. They're leaving California, New York, and Illinois, and moving to Florida and Texas. They are looking for sane, responsible government. Let's return to Christoph's argument that West Coast cities are too idealistic. Let me say again, as I have said before, they are too committed to the wrong religion. The problem in progressive cities is bad theology. They begin by not believing in the true God of the Bible and then follow this up by a false doctrine of man. Progressive liberals believe people are basically good. The homeless and criminals are victims rather than the Christian view that they are evil and have made foolish choices. The abandonment of the biblical view of the family has contributed mightily to the crime in our cities, removing the father from the home and trying to replace him with big government. Progressives enjoy great wealth and blessing, but it is not because of progressivism. It is the gift of Christian culture, a culture they seem determined to destroy. The column Christophe wrote took courage it is rare for anyone to look in the mirror and ask, what's wrong with me? But he did it. Now I pray he will follow it up with more wisdom and better answers. Answers that begin with the Bible and the person of Jesus Christ.